Okay, we're back live at NAB here on the show floor, and I'm joined by Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine. Jeffrey, thank you for uh, visiting. It's always good to see you at these shows. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks a lot, Dan, for uh, having me. Yeah, so, uh, you know, when you come in, good energy having NAB back after a couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it been like for you so far? Oh, well, I'm going to start by saying this is not my first conference. Uh, I was at Infocom back in October, and uh, and I spoke there, and then CES, uh, where I just did straight up booth to booth interviews, and then of course this. So, uh, it's 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 not the first re rodeo. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, I've been learning a lot, and I've been uh, working a lot on reducing my gear so I can get in and get out, especially with when we were wearing masks at CES because we're all like this, yeah. talking like burn. It was, it was beautiful. So yeah. So I got to ask you first. I always like seeing your kit because you keep it pretty nimble yeah. but still high quality when you're on the show floor. So can you yeah, show us what show us what you're rocking today? We got it right here. It is the DJI. So DJI has the had the uh, pocket. Lower that a little bit so it can be seen. Uh, has the pocket. This is the pocket too, uh, with the extension mod for their. Uh, this is pre DJI mic. So it attaches right to the uh, to the gimbal there, and then I have a single item box that I can put on my uh, my person. I can put a lav on it, or I made I 3D printed up a little uh, handheld thing, uh, so it looks like a regular microphone. Uh, three axis gimbal, so I can I can move it around, and it's not gonna we're not gonna get a lot of shake out of it. So I can pop it off of my monopod right here, and I could do interviews <laughs> like that. Uh, back and forth and then snap it back on uh, which has been very handy and then of course the monopod which is just an awesome I, I, I find them I have one by Sarui which had the long legs this one's a shorter model monopod uh, with uh, agile adjust uh, legs on it so I can put these in three positions and then it just basically I set it on the ground Set it and forget it, as yeah. they say in the uh, in the. Yeah, but don't forget it. Make oh, sure yeah, to don't do forget. It. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, I so. would want that. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm always looking for ways, new ways to do it. Yesterday we did live stream. Uh, I'm also a part of what's called Office Hours, which is over at officehours.global, where it's a bunch of industry professionals, audio, video, uh, and and a lot more. We actually have a guy showed up. He's a Santa, uh, an online Santa Claus. And he's trying to get better for next year and, and bringing the kids in virtually so they can have a, a fun time. They have, he's got like a green screen set up and everything like awesome. that. Just, it's just amazing. So, but we meet every single day. We've met every day since the beginning of the pandemic. And it's hosted by Alex Lindsay, who, who, was, uh, who was with uh, Industrial Light and Magic, now is part of 090. And of course, officehours.global, which is uh, his one of his new ventures. Okay. And uh, so yesterday we did a live stream from the floor. We had two teams. We had myself as one of the teams, and Jeff Keithley uh, was another team, uh, if you know if you know the name. And uh, we basically, he was covering the North Hall. I was covering the Central Hall. We went up to booths. We did one-on-one -on -one interviews. It was, it was a blast. Yeah, and nice. uh, we went through Zoom, had a panel that was watching, and then after they heard the interview, they could talk back and forth what they what their thoughts are on it. They could read all the press and uh, press uh, junkets and things like that, yeah. and be able to uh, come back in and, and just talk. About That's it. It awesome. awesome. I really like the way that you do coverage of these shows on Geekasine because it feels like I'm watching a broadcast, like on you know a, sort of a television station or something. The, yeah. the way you present it is really smart. So, yeah. what you know? How do you try to? make sure that you're delivering the content in a way that's friendly and accessible. As best as possible. So, I mean, I can't have a setup like this, and, and unfortunately, I, I kind of blocked the, cam <laughs> the camera with the cable here. But anyway, yeah. uh, for me, it, it, it's really about capturing and then doing post-production on the videos. Because, you know, as great as this thing is right here, you know, it gets a little bit shaky after a point. I, I was doing an interview, or actually it was more of a product line um, discussion where I go down the line and, and talk about the products and this one guy just started coming in and grabbing this stuff and is like hey wait a, wait a minute I'm, I'm doing a video here so and of course I'm not going to show that which you know so I'll do the post-production cut that out yeah and then uh, and then bring it yeah. back do in you do there, so. do you do all your post or do you get some help or how do you get your are, are you offering for help well <laughs> yeah, maybe Jeremy I'm, our producer can can help Jeremy uh, are, are you okay with that yeah <laughs> I'm give sure me a, he would give be. me a thumbs up if you're okay with that. 
He turned off his camera, so yeah. I... Switch to the wide shot if you agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <Darn>. So okay. <laughs> oh, wide shot. There Woo! we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun and uh, and learning a lot of new stuff. You know, going around the booths and, and you know uh, like Frame IO. We just uh, I just yeah. did that interview with uh, Mike. We'll talk about being able to turn around yeah. your content quickly with and, camera to cloud. That's pretty cool. And the funny thing about that is he did not want to talk about Frame IO. He wanted to talk about all the cool stuff that 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 you could get content. So you yeah. could use Frame IO to oh, collect okay. like uh, the the lenses, uh, the phone ca case. You can put the lenses on to. Yeah. And, and uh, he was talking about Filmic Pro, and he was, you know, he was talking about all these cool ways to make the, the content. Yeah. Because the reality is you need a place to upload the content so you can get your editors doing what they need to do. You don't need to talk. He didn't need to really talk about it. We ended up, I ended up forcing him to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, of course, we couldn't really talk about the acquisition. I'm going to find that out a little bit later today yeah. when I meet up with Adobe. Well, that's one of the acquisitions that was uh, pretty exciting to hear about. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's, so. Oh, there's been a lot of great... Uh, a lot of great things. Well, I went to the Black Magic booth, for example, yeah. and they said, you know, we've had two years to really just get ready for this show. Yeah. yeah. And so they just they just threw it all out. There. Oh yeah, it they've was got like crazy, the, so. I think they're a bit bigger booth than ever before, really. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. A lot of stuff. To show. Now, now you guys, you guys have put out some new stuff, right? That's right. That's right. Got? Well, we've got right here. Well, I've got a box. This what I've got, but uh, we got Pearl Nano, the newest member of the Pearl family of Epifan encoders. Okay. Uh, and this is a single channel encoder, two inputs, uh, but the really cool thing here is what's going on under the hood. It's We call it the perfect fit encoder. Okay. And the reason for that is you can do really cool things like streaming SRT in H.265 codec. There's also a 4K option for this. Oh, wow. So if you need to be able to send low latency video around the world, mm -hmm. and you need like a really reliable way to do that, uh, Pearl Nano is a, a really great fit. So, um, and, and you're, you're using that throughout the studio? We're actually, studio. we have three Pearl Nanos here, one okay. for each of the three cameras in this studio. Okay, and Jeremy's not here. He's... You noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because so he turned off his camera. That's so why. Jeremy is, you know, operating from the cloud. So he's actually in Ottawa. Where, are there some? Somewhere. Yeah, where are you, Jeremy? Um, oh, there he is. Hey, there Jeremy. There he is. Oh, so he's... Oh, uh, that's an awesome setup. Look at that. So, cute little setup here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure we could... Jeremy, do you have audio, your audio on, or I can just explain it? Um, so he's... Yeah, I should, uh, I should have audio. Can you hear me now? The, uh, uh, go ahead. Give me a yeah, second here. Here we go. You should he's you should hear me job, now. And we're telling um, okay. Yeah, it's not it's not easy, but I can I can do okay. it. I guess you don't have the IFB, but basically we have uh, I'm connected through a Nano here that I'm SRT um, sending an SRT in to you guys just to uh, to see me, uh, and then after that it's all in the cloud, right? I switch everything in the cloud, and I have the uh, I have a stream deck connected to our cloud system. Uh, so I can switch on my stream deck really easily, uh, but everything is uh, everything's on the cloud. I have my uh, channels, and that's pretty much it. Okay. It's very simple. And and the McDonald's cup can't forget the McDonald's cup. <laughs> yeah, we, we we didn't see that. There's no there's no McDonald's <laughs> cup. I'm not eating McDonald's. That's amazing. So, and yeah, so uh, we're actually talking about uh, ways that we can do that, and then bring it into a Zoom panel, yeah. so that when we when we're not online. We can have the uh, panel do some discussion yep. about what they just saw, and then come back, and then that way everybody's got the voice in in that situation. Yeah, that's very just, cool. That's I mean, I think awesome. one of the coolest things that has happened in the last two years is that you know we've learned all of this new all these new tricks, and now we're able to deploy them into the, these sort of these hybrid production experiences. Yeah. yeah. So the people that can't be here. Don't miss out. They can and, feel like they're yeah, here. You they know? can feel like they're here. I mean, you were already doing that, yeah. but now there's just but, more but tricks in your what's bag. What's really right? cool about this is now you have Zoom, which has established itself, or Teams, I suppose, yeah. or, or whatever, um, even Discord channels, so they can be all private. And you could uh, you could you could set up this SRT. You could bring this into a Discord channel with a panel of eight people uh, mm. that actually talk about instead of just watching the YouTube videos, yeah. which is all well and good. But now you have you're watching a video, and you've, you're with other people, 
to explain what you just saw. Right, sharing the links full, yeah, or, you The know, full watch party, yeah. the second or third, fifth, whatever That's a really good idea yeah. using Discord. Uh, yeah. I've also heard of Discord being used for like back channel during a production. Yeah. Well, you know the Twit, uh, uh, This Week in Tech, they have a full Discord channel and they pipe their, uh, their feeds in, their video feeds in there. Awesome. So you can sit there and watch the, the actual show that's going on at the time yeah. and then uh, talk about it on their, on their, in their uh, what do they call it, uh, the hashtag ones, uh, links yeah. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't think of it, but uh, the whole point is that uh, they have set it up. We did this, uh, the 2020, there was a Discord channel called Orbital Jigsaw. Uh, and they cover enterprise technology. VMworld uh, by VMware uh, was all virtual, and so we normally do one-on-one, -on -one, uh, uh, or not one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, presentation style uh, stuff, yep. so person and presentation. And of course, we couldn't do it on stage at the show because there was no show. Right. So we ended up doing it virtually, and it got pushed through Orbital Jigsaw so they could uh, they could actually watch it and comment on it. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Oh, man. So. Uh, you ever feel, Jeffrey, that we're like we're living in the future right now? Like, is, <laughs> yeah, and now we're living in the future even more, and yeah. now we're living in the future even right. more. So, yeah. but I can't wait to see how this this works right here. Uh, really quick, uh, so how is this powered? So you can actually power this with PoE plus, okay, or standard AC adapter. Can so, can you put a battery on it? Is it like a twelve volt or? Um, I would have to double check. I I think it is possible, but okay. I don't think you, can, you don't. Know I don't think sure. that's no, a very that's common fine. setup. That's fine. Yeah. And then uh, well, if we if we do a lot of remote stuff, well, yeah, it'd be nice to enough. have something like that. Fair enough. Uh, to do it. and that's what I you know I used to use the WebEx, yeah. or not the WebEx, but the. Uh, a little box. Oh, I yeah. can't think of it. What's it called? Uh, oh, the Webcaster X2. Webcaster X2. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah. I knew I was saying that's, it wrong. You know but, what? Yeah. There is still a fan page that's very active on Facebook for that device. Yeah. And even though Epifan doesn't officially support it anymore, there's like, we have fans who still, like in our company, there are people who are still using it. Lots of people still streaming with it. It was one button to stream, right? Yeah, it was It was easiest for me to do. Uh, what I ended up doing uh, was I went and I did the interviews. In in because at the time you know we're still we were still battling with just on the cusp of 4G and things yeah. like that, so I would go do the interviews. I would walk outside. Yeah. I'd plug my camera in to the uh, webcaster, and then I'd just hit the play button. Yeah. So technically it wasn't live, but it was delayed yeah. live. And, and in all reality, it wasn't edited or anything like that. So yeah. they got to, to check out the whole thing. Very cool. Um, and and, and it, was, it was pretty close. It's not like they could ask questions yeah. anyway, so it worked really well. Now we're, we're, we've got better infrastructure, so I feel a little bit more confident. Yeah, to do we got like some 5G in here. In there, so. so you know yeah. what I was doing is uh, I installed the Larix app on my phone. Oh yeah? So I can send an H.265 SRT stream from my phone up to Jeremy's studio. Nice. And we can mix it in with this show, so you can have kind of like a complement of mobile cameras or mm -hmm. studio cameras. You know, uh, maybe I want 4K cameras here, but I need a little roaming. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So we're gonna try some on. of that. Later yeah, today. that's that's yeah. what I did with mine. My my rig for the stream yesterday actually was an ASUS Zenfone Seven, and I love that because because when we during pandemic we used those phones for what uh, at home kits. Yep. So I put it in a cage, and then I put it into a Pelican case, shipped it off to somebody. They set it up. We used TeamViewer, which is why I used Android. Yeah. Uh, we used TeamViewer to uh, access it. I set them up in Filmic Pro, and then we recorded. We didn't do a Zoom, because yeah. at that time it wasn't even HD. Uh, we, did, we did the recording, 8K, up to 8K. Wow. And, then, uh, and then I just copied it to the Google Drive, and then I had it within a couple hours yeah. back at my desk. And then the person would just tear it down and, and send the Unreal, Pelican case back. But the Zenfone, the cool thing about that was it has the, uh, the the cameras are on a hinge. So if this is the phone right here, and this is the front of the screen right here, we'll go like this. This, this is the front of the screen right here. He switched cameras on me. So this is the front of the screen right here. And I wanted to uh, I wanted to hit selfie mode. I hit the button, and all of a sudden this thing would flip like oh. this, and then the lenses would be like this. So you've just got your good camera lenses, not your low res. I would like to say yes, but still the phone, all these OSs think that the front camera is going to be less less than the than the rear camera. Right. However, I still got a pretty decent lens out of it. So yeah. it still was like the front is is 1080p. Whereas if I flipped it back, I could get a full 8K. Yeah. So 
Um, and of course, it really depended on the software. If I used the native uh, of uh, camera support, I could get, I think it was 4K at that point. Yeah. So, and since then they've done some updates, so I'd have to check it out. But uh, it was it was perfect for the Zoom call because the best we can do is 1080p anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, did just that having that set up, put in the USB-C. I had a uh, dual uh, wireless lav mic, so I could mic guest and myself up yeah. and we'd have a conversation See, hands free. It seems like there's like these really efficient simple workflows that people can do and it, you know you can add complexity to what you're doing but sometimes just being quick and nimble and yeah. getting the content out yeah. efficiently is the most important thing. Absolutely. People are like the faster that you can turn things around, the more relevant your content is. Right? Is that fair to say? Oh yeah, absolutely. And and being able to do it remotely, even in here. Now we we were already thinking, and, and I, this is the first time. That's when I started thinking about the pearl again. Yeah. Uh, was if we end up doing a show, where right now we're we're in one location, but what if somebody was in the North Hall on, in a studio? What if somebody was here in a studio? What if somebody was in the West Hall in a studio? Yeah. Uh, and then we have two, uh, or all three of these, on pearls, and yeah. then going back to a main studio, exactly. running uh, running their, all their gear. Yeah. yeah. So they don't have to have portable gear; they have their studio gear right. to make the mix, and maybe a little bit of uh, I don't know yeah, fluctuations. Add some titles, yeah. add some graphics, Absolutely. some motion backgrounds, what have you. Is Jeremy right? adding any graphics to this? He's doing just some basic titles. Okay. Uh, we 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 often run Singular Live. I don't know if you're familiar with Singular Live. Okay. Singular Live, it's like a web-based uh, titling software. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then you just pipe it in over NDI. You've got alpha layer transparency, and it he yeah. can set it up with the Stream Deck so that he can you know. That's cool. Just program his switches. We use SPX GC. Uh, okay. Our good friend Tuomo. I'm familiar with it. Tell me, yeah, tell me about uh, it. It's based on the Netherlands. Our good friend Tuomo uh, is, has developed it. And so we, you know, we've done a lot of stuff. Uh, last month, we did what was called OH Space. About 50 miles north of here, uh, or south of here, is the Jean Dry Lake bed. And one of the, one of the office hours people, John Preto, uh, his, he was building a rocket. Uh, and he was, uh, I can't remember exactly where, it was basically a, a getting his N-class certification in rocketry, which is pretty high, and no pun intended. <laughs> uh, and this big rocket, which if you go to the Great American Pub, you'll actually be able to see the rocket sit, uh, sitting there. Um, so on March 19th of this year, we launched that rocket on the Gene Lake bed. But what was more interesting was, we had a team of 30 people, I think it was 30, somewhere around there, 20 to 30 people that were there to take video. Okay. So we had uh, one person, he, he put all his production gear into a Tesla. Okay. And then he ran it from the Tesla. No and kidding. then uh, we ran a lot of NDI for yep. the cameras. And we had two Starlinks. Because, uh, of course, there's no, the closest internet six right. miles away. Yeah. And from the news, one, one of the towers just fell down uh, oh, in yeah, Vegas. Yeah. So you can't trust that type of stuff. Yeah. So the two Starlinks were, were pushing up the 1080 signal yeah. that would go to YouTube. I was back in Madison yeah. uh, taking care of the YouTube channel because I couldn't be there for that. Yeah. And uh, it, was just, it was just an amazing event. And, and yeah. we launched a rocket. Curious. Um, uh, so how is streaming with... Starlink was it? Did, how does it work? Like obviously, there's going to be some latency, right? I yeah, think. there's going to be a little bit of latency. I can't talk too much to that effect because, of course, I wasn't there doing any of the of the work. But yeah. um, we had they had, like I said, they had two Starlinks. One that was the production Starlink for the video, right? And one that was for all the back end stuff. You know, really cool. uh, yeah. And uh, and of course, this this just came out. All the, everything's in place uh, to the point where we could we couldn't do a 4K signal. But we could definitely do a 1080p, uh, 60 yeah. frame signal. And at the end of the, at the end of the, we saw saw a little bit of fragmentation, not much, yeah. not yeah. much. Uh, so it was pretty impressive uh, that whole thing. And it ran off of all NDI. Yeah. And uh, it's just uh, we we of course recorded it. So we have like terabytes worth of data that we're still sorting through to uh, to do post that's, stuff. That's and, so cool. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So really, it's starting to become like. The, bit, the the only barrier to broadcast is your own imagination. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Of like what, how you want to set things up. And yeah. 
you know, and we haven't the, even tapped into virtual or, or, yeah. or metaverse or oh, whatever gosh. you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some so, kind of yeah. NFT stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. but we, we are doing a lot of virtual. We, we have uh, one group uh, uh, that is doing uh, remote, remote uh, music. Uh, so they're, it's called the Belfast Project. Okay. And they're in Belfast, Ireland. But everybody's around the world uh, switching cameras. Uh, running cameras, running sound. Yeah. Uh, th our sound guys, uh, the, the the sound person that usually does this is in the Philippines mm -hmm. for the sound. The, uh, some some of them are in Belfast, of course, but some of them are in the United States. I did a I was a uh, I was a TD for one of their songs because that was the thing was, you know, come into the Zoom room, raise your hand, and then you get a chance to uh, switch a show. Yeah. And so I got to switch one of the songs for one of That's the bands. That's so, oh, it was dude, just, it that, was is so yeah. that is so cool. Experience, and you feel like yeah. you're a part of it. You exactly. Know? It's, exactly. It's that experiential, um, you know, engagement with your audience yeah. that brings them in. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean. But now we can do it even more if we have the Pearl Nano. Yeah, there you go. Pearl <laughs> Nano. This is a, a great device if you want to send or receive SRT. Okay. One of the applications we saw was like a live auction house. So, oh, really quick. So, you don't have a transmitter and a receiver. This is a transmitter and receiver. That's correct. Mode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this will, oh. this will, you can ingest an SRT source, mm -hmm. or you can push one out. Could, is, is there one that goes two way, so it sends and receives? Yes. Yeah. You can do both at the same time. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. So, That's what we're doing right here. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, if we do set up that uh, for future NABs, one yeah. in one hall, one in the other, yeah. we can use one box instead of two yeah, boxes. Yeah, and you don't even need that much bandwidth. I mean, we only have 10 meg in this booth, uh, which is, you know, still not even a fully reliable 10 meg. Yeah. There's some dips, but yeah. we've, you know, we're sending 1080p streams at 1.5 megabit. That's awesome. HEVC. You know, you're basically getting the same quality with half the bandwidth of H.264. That's right? crazy. Yeah. So it, it enables more possibilities, more locations. You know, um, you know, you can, you can get a little bit more reliable where internet is not reliable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. What what trends are you going to watch for for the uh, last couple or for the you know, the near term? The near term, the big the big thing that everybody's gonna try and figure out is how can I make hybrid less icky? Because right now, everybody thinks, oh, we can run a virtual and we can run an in-person yeah. and we can combine the two. And there are some successes. There are some Band-Aid, coconut shoestring type <laughs> yeah. uh, workarounds that people do, um, but there isn't a solid pattern. That, yeah. that can work every single time and make everybody happy and and make the people that and are And make virtual. the experience equal for the yeah. people who are there and the people who are remote, right? Exactly. You don't want exactly. to prioritize necessarily one over the other and, you know, half, half the attendees are disappointed or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And, and by doing that and figuring it all out, everybody that's working behind the scenes has a job to do, whether you're on site doing something or you're in in your own home studio in yeah. Ottawa, uh, yeah. uh, mixing the show, yeah. or whatnot. So yeah, exactly. He said he was from Wisconsin. That's cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm from Wisconsin. That's oh, you're from yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, 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 okay. Wisconsin. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the, the, uh, I just love the idea that we can that we're striving towards that, and I think yeah. one day somebody's going to say, "Let's do this." And what if we did this? And the next thing you know, boom, we're in a new age of how we do these shows. Yeah. So what's interesting is kind of the way that Epiphan is thinking of this is like, there's this world over here that's like video conferencing. It's been around for a while. We're sort of familiar with the fact that you can have, you know, a real time video conversation with many people. Mm -hmm. And you've got this world over here that is like the NA, traditional NAB world that is broadcast, right? Yeah, yeah. The gap between those two worlds is a big gray area, but it's getting smaller. Smaller. And, Every and single day. I think we're going to see that Venn diagram start to merge, and that's where Epiphan is. And in. I'll be over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you'll be like, I don't know, whatever the next thing is after that. So. No, no, I... I'm not as cutting edge as I'd like to, to believe because my focus at Geekazine is not as much video, more, more about consumer electronics. Yeah. So 
but this does fall into that because a lot of people are using things like the Nano for yeah. the consumer electronics uh, for their home studios. So, with the podcast, little, so everybody suppose, has a podcast. I suppose there is now, part right? of that uh, yeah. Venn diagram, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, the whole point is that uh, I, I'll let the people that understand how SRTs really work. Yeah. Instead of me just oh SRT, I can do it. Yeah, yeah there we go. exactly. And yeah. uh, and then and then go from there. So, yeah. You know. So tell me a little bit about Geekazine. Where I, I mean, I'm familiar with it. I, I think it's great content you produce there. But for those who aren't as familiar, what is Geekazine? Well, Geekazine is simply uh, we've got uh, uh, basically a, I've been well I've been kind of thinking about retooling a little bit. But the idea is to review products. Come to come to conferences like that. Talk to people like yourself and people like you, uh, whether it be virtual or uh, whatnot. We did. I did a whole virtual any a virtual everything. I call it a virtual conference series uh, during the pandemic, and I'm still doing that to uh, to a level. Uh, but be able to get the content, find out the products, and uh, get the reviews, and get the hands on, and uh, tell people what I think about yeah. it. Awesome. And, uh, and go from there. So yeah, oh, fantastic. I just yeah, I think you're doing. You're always been doing some really cool stuff, and yeah. enjoy following your following your content. And Thank you. So, Geekazine, but also Office Hours. Where do we find Office Hours? Well, Office. Uh, well, I'll give you three things. First okay. of all, Geekazine.com. The second one is called Build Day Live, and this is a this is a venture I have with a friend of mine, Alistair Cook. He lives in New Zealand, and what we do is we take a enterprise appliance. So and we put it into it, a data center, which is a lot of fun. So we would normally go to San, uh, no, San Jose or something like that, and then uh, put a storage unit into our data center, and then set it up for like a virtual cool. experience or something like that. So we're doing, we're still doing that. So that's the second one. And then of course, officehours.global is the daily call, which anybody can be on the panel. All you have to do is uh, simply uh, go to the website, find out how to join. We've got a Discord channel that you can join, but you got you got to jump through a couple hoops to do it, and that's by design. So, and then of course, be part of the community because we got people that have uh, done shows, uh, TV shows, done movies. Uh, we got one guy, Courtney. He actually was the first person to make the first computer teleprompter. Okay. Um, so we've got some pretty high-end professionals, and then we got me on the show. <laughs> You got to keep it fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I still have my my things I can talk <laughs> yeah, about, yeah. and then I learn. Yeah. Uh, how you know things like you know products like this, like the the pearl, and uh, and then I can start putting it in my workflow and uh, learn a little bit more. Yeah. There, so. Awesome. Well, I'm going to check out Office Hours. I'd encourage our entire audience to do so as well and follow Geekazine. Always great content, Jeff. And follow Epifan too. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here at NAB. It was great to see you. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much, Dan. Cheers. Take care.